Caridina shrimp, such as crystal red shrimp, are a very popular shrimp kept in the shrimp hobby as they have strong patterns and coloration. However, they are a bit harder to keep compared to your standard cherry shrimp due to needing a more specific tank environment and water parameters. Welcome back to the world of aquariums and stay tuned as I'll do a full guide on setting up a crystal red breeding tank. For any shrimp breeding tank, the recommended things you should have is the tank itself, a filter, some substrate, plants and maybe a heater depending on the temperature of your room. For the tank, a tank size of around 10 to 20 gallons will be the most optimal for breeding, but any size tank between 5 to 30 gallons will be a good size tank to start off with. Right now, I've chosen to go with a 15 gallon tank, which is around 60 litres, and a tank this size can comfortably house a few hundred shrimp when they breed. Next up, you want to make sure you have the correct water parameters in order to breed Caridina shrimp. The most optimum conditions for breeding crystal shrimp in Taiwan Bees, which are another type of Caridina shrimp, are as shown. You want a pH of between 5.5 to 6.5, a GH or general hardness between 3 to 6 degrees, a KH of 0 to 1, temperature between 21 to 24 degrees Celsius, and finally a TDS of around 90 to 120. Unless your tap water is in this range or near it, and can be adjusted by the soil, I can recommend using RODI water and mineralizing it with GH salts. For a better understanding of what these parameters mean, please check out my other video in the link below on how they affect your aquarium. Based on this, aquarium soil will always be your go-to substrate for Caridina tank setups. These are known as a buffering substrate because they will bring in water parameters such as pH and KH down to a more suitable condition for Caridina shrimp. ADA Amazonia soil is my general preference as it is affordable and works well for both shrimp and planted tanks. But any planted or shrimp soil branch should do the trick. For the amount of soil, I am using around 6 litres of soil and will follow a general ratio of at least 1 litre of soil for every 10 litres of water. Also, do not wash your soil when first adding it. This is a common mistake some people do and will make your tank go completely brown when you fill it up. You can see, I am also sprinkling some shrimp bacteria powders. This is not essential, but will help promote a better ecosystem and improve the shrimp health. Now that we have finished the substrate layer, we can fill up the tank with our mineralized water. Dry substrate will often float during the filling process, and to prevent this, it is first sprayed. Next. Clean wrap is placed on top of the substrate in a small container above that. During this process, I've also added the filter, which is a sponge filter. These are the most commonly used filters in shrimp tanks for many reasons. They are affordable and the sponges prevent shrimp from being sucked in. But most of all, the sponges hold lots of beneficial bacteria on the surface, which the shrimp and baby shrimp will still feed on constantly. This tank can now begin the cycle process, which will generally take between 6 to 8 weeks. The soil will already leach out the much needed ammonia to cycle your tank but I will still add some of the bottled bacteria to help this out. Even if the tank has already fully cycled, waiting for a longer period of time will allow it to mature more, which the shrimp will prefer. For the first week, I will do two 50% water changes to help decrease some of the initial ammonia, and then another 50% water change on the fourth week. By the 6th to 8th week, your tank should already be cycled. Depending on your nitrate level, you want to keep doing small water changes until it is down to 5, where you can add the shrimp. You may have also noticed that I haven't added any plants during the initial cycling process, and this is because the high ammonia released from the soil initially will melt most of the plants using shrimp tanks. 
The main types of plants I add are mosses, small rising plants and floating plants. Both mosses and rising plants are great for shrimps as they grow very well in the shrimp parameters and don't require much nutrients. These plants will provide both a shelter for molten shrimp and a food source through biofilm on the leaves. I also recommend floating plants such as water lettuce as these will suck up a lot of their excess nutrients such as nitrates produced from the shrimp waste. With the tank fully cycled, you can finally start adding your shrimp. If you're wondering on how many shrimp you add, generally between 10 to 30 is enough to start a colony for most tank sizes. I always strip acclimate any new shrimp in a bucket for 2 hours before adding them. To do this, I just use airline tubing and tie one end together to slow down the water flow. I will drip at a speed of around 1 to 2 drops per second and this will slowly match the shrimp water parameters to the tank water parameters. Afterwards, you can slowly release the shrimp into the tank. For now, there is a lot of fluffy biofilm in the tank, and this is what they will feed on, but eventually you should supplement the diet with shrimp pellets. In terms of water changes, small changes between 10 to 20% a week or every fortnight is sufficient. The more shrimp you have, the more waste will be produced and therefore the more water changes are needed. Skipping to one month later, you can see that I have changed some things in the tank. The initial peacock moss has been replaced by physicin moss and boosted phalandra plants, as I personally like these plants more. But most of all, you can see that the shrimp colours have improved greatly. Two more months later, and the shrimp are now starting to breed like crazy. The numbers has already tripled by now and you can see that there are babies everywhere. You really just need to make sure you keep on top of your water parameters while supplementing with good food. It may also be good to add Indian almond leaves, chola wood or outer cones as they are beneficial. But for this tank, I aim to keep it as simple as possible. Eventually, your tank will become like this, and you will know that you have a very successful breeding tank. I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it very helpful. If you have any questions, please comment below and subscribe to this channel for more future videos. Thanks for watching.